Hi, I'm Dr. Karen Agar, and this video looks at working with the char variable type in Java and takes a closer look at strings and exactly what they are and how to use them. So we first start by talking about what a char variable is in Java. Char is one of Java's eight primitive types and can be used to store a single character in memory. Now, this character could be any single character. It could be a alphabetic, like an A, B, or C. It could also be a digit, space, or punctuation. So think about any character on your keyboard. Char literals are wrapped in single quotes. So for example, you can see a number of them here. I've got the lowercase a, capital B, capital Z. These are all alphabetic examples of characters, but then we can also have numbers, punctuation, and even white space. Chars follow the normal declaring and assigning rules where we use the type char, notice that it is lowercase, then a good variable name, the assignment operator, and then something of type char on this side. These three examples show char literals being assigned to a char variable here, and note that I again used an alphabetic example, a punctuation example, and then a numeric example. Note that when storing numbers like three, it does have to be a single digit, and we cannot perform math with these the same way that we can with int variables. Note that in addition to these symbols, there are also several special characters in Java. A few of the special characters can be seen here. Um, note that they all begin with this backslash. This is called the escape character. And essentially this tells Java we will not actually store the following character. However, these are special characters. So this backslash or escape character followed by n will store a new line character. So think vertical white space being stored in a char. Similarly, we have things like tab and there are others. Again, these are some of the more common ones. And then, as you can imagine, trying to store a single quote or a double quote inside a pair of single quotes or double quotes would cause an issue. Therefore, we have to escape it in order to tell Java to literally store a single quote inside these outer pair of quotes as a char. Similarly with double quotes here, and then the same for this backslash, because this is the escape character, we're literally saying store the backslash. Another item to note about chars is the way that they actually store things in memory. So all chars actually store that character with a numeric value. Um, you can always look up these values in an ASCII table. So even white space or a period or a capital A versus a lowercase a, they all have different numeric values. Because chars store numeric values, Mathematical symbols like plus or minus can be used, but it's going to perform math a little bit different. Um, even if you were storing a number, like in our last example, storing the number three in a char, um, it's not going to work the way that we think. It's going to perform math with that character's numeric value. So, for example here. If I have a char, I named it letter, and I assigned it the value of capital B, just for this example, note that capital B has the numeric value of 66. If I then in a subsequent statement add one to that char, then it's gonna increment this 66 to 67, which is in fact the char capital C, and that's what would be stored in this letter two. Anytime we want to scale letter grades, think A, B, C, D, right? Or an itemized list, item A, item B, item C, all the way through item Z. So this can be a really useful trick to increment or decrement which letter we're working with. So now that we understand a bit more about chars, I'd like to revisit a string variable. A string variable is just a sequence of chars. So string literals we know are enclosed in double quotes. So for example, here I have string name equals Dr. Agar. But now I wanna look at this a little bit more in depth because really all a string is, is a way to store a chain or a sequence of char variables. Well, here where D would be the first character, R, period, space, and so on. I do wanna note that this example, my name, Dr. Agar, contains all kinds of chars. 
um, both capital and lowercase letters, punctuation, and white space. Here's another example where I have a string address. Again, I've got all three examples here, numeric, chars, white space, letters, and punctuation. And so in order to really discuss chars, we need to look even closer at strings and the way these are stored in memory. So for this example, where we were storing Dr. Agar in a string named name, I want to note that we are actually storing nine different chars here, starting with D, this would be one, two, three, the white space counts as four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And just to visually represent that, I'm going to put these all in their own box, and you can see here that each one is represented, even the space, as a different char. Each of these chars can be referenced by their index, and it's important to note that in every single string, the indices or indexes start at the number zero. So here's a closer look at the indices for this string. You can see here that the capital D char is stored at index zero, the lowercase r at index one, you can see punctuation and white space both take up their own indices, and then the last valid index is eight here. Note that no matter what string you're using, the last valid index is always going to be the number of chars, remember this stored nine chars, minus one. And again, this is because it starts at zero, so everything is just shifted left by one. Now the reason it's important to understand the inner workings of the type string is because this is actually a class in Java. So just like scanner is a class in Java, string is an actual class that's downloaded in our Java library. I wanna note real quick that string is not one of Java's eight primitive types. You may not have heard of all eight primitive types yet, but the ones you have heard of are easy to recognize because they all begin in lowercase letters. Think about the types you've learned so far, int, double, maybe long, and now char, all begin in a lowercase letter. String obviously begins in a capital S, therefore it's going to be easy to separate. It is not one of the eight primitive types that you will learn about. Again, string is an actual class in Java, and so far you may have worked with other classes in Java like scanner, the math class, perhaps the random class, and so on. So every time we create a new string in Java, we are actually creating a new string object or an instance of the string class. Note that this is one of the few examples where you do not need to follow the typical format of an object. This is typically how we create a new object using the name of the class, like scanner, giving it a name, keyboard equals new, the name of the class, and parentheses that may or may not have things in it. Again, we do not need to do this with the string class just because we use strings so often in Java that they've made it a bit easier to use. Um, because we are in fact creating objects of the string class every time we declare a new string, we can use these objects to call any method that is defined in Java string class. So let's go take a brief look at the API for Java string class. Here I am again in the Oracle documentation. We've done something similar with the math class in another video of mine. Um, so I am on the Oracle documentation. You know this is the official Java API and I'm looking in the string class. Now again, anytime you look at an API, there's gonna be a lot of information, so sometimes you wanna just look for things that you're currently wanting to use. I'm gonna scroll past all of this description and go straight to the different methods. Here we can see a list of methods, and just to give you a brief scroll, there are a ton of methods in Java string class. Um, also note in APIs, if you're not familiar with using these, these are always listed in alphabetical order. We will be using the char et method a bit today, but we'll come back to it when we start looking at it. So before we move on to, to the string class and using its methods, let's revisit the scanner class and some of the common methods that we've used with it. We've used methods like next int that returns an int to us, next double that returns type double, next long would return a long, and so on. There's many methods like this that will return the type that's listed here. Note that if we wanted to read in a string from the user, there is not a method called next string. 
Instead, we have two options. We could use either next or next line. We've looked at using these in another video, but just as a refresher, next is going to return a string up until white space is entered. So think about it as a single word, whereas next line, as you can imagine, will return a string that is the entire line. Both of these can be used to read in strings from your user. However, I do want to note that unfortunately in Java, there is not a method defined to return a char. So following this kind of format for our other primitive types, int double long, um, it's often thought that there would be a method like next char, but I want to note again that this does not exist. So if we want to read in a char, again, the scanner class does not have a method that reads in and returns a char, so we will have to come up with our own solution. The solution is actually pretty simple once you really understand the way strings work. First, we're going to use the scanner class to read in a string. Again, note, we've got options of next and next line methods to do this, but as long as we read in and return a string, this accomplishes the first step. We now have an object or a variable of type string, and so we can begin using the string class's methods. So the second step here is we want to only get the first character from that string. Remember, a string is just a sequence of characters. So we want to get the first one from that string. And we do this by using a method in the string class. Flipping over to Java's API, the very first method here is the char at method. So here it says it returns the char value at the specified index. You can see the name for the method is char et, the A is capitalized, and it expects us when using it to pass in an int like zero, one, two, three, any integer number, and it will return to us a char at that index. So to go back to our example, if we had the string name equals Dr. Agar, then again, the D is at index zero, the R is at index one, and so on. We could put any of these indices into the char at method. So zero through eight are the valid indices here, and it would give us back whichever char is at the index we provided. So name, and again, this is the name of our string, our string object dot method name is always our syntax for calling methods. So name dot char at zero would return the character D and similarly name dot char at eight would return the character R here. Now note that it does return it case sensitive. So the capital D is returned in this example and a lowercase R is returned in this example. And also note that I can only put the numbers zero through eight in for this argument because name only contains those valid indices. Char at zero is commonly used to help us read in chars because we just grab the very first one that's entered. So let's go to Eclipse for some brief examples. So here I am in Eclipse. I have a tester file set up with a main method. So far, I've just prompted the user to enter their letter grade, and what I'd like to do is just use this scanner object that I created to read in a single char to store their letter grade. So again, we do not have a next char method, so our steps were to first read in a string and then grab the first char from that string. So I'm going to accomplish the first step by using my scanner object, note I've named it keyboard here, to call one of the methods from the scanner class that gets a string. Note that I could use either next or next line here. I'm going to just choose next, and then I'm going to save it in a string object. So string str equals keyboard.next. Then I'm going to use this string that they hand me and just extract the first character. So char at the index of zero. Now this is going to give me back a char. So what I would like to do is store it in a char object that I'll name letter grade. And then I'll just print it to check that I get the right output. So let me go ahead and save and run this. 
So note here that this is actually reading in an entire string, but it is completely valid for a string to be just a single character. So here I'm going to enter the letter D, which would be read in as a string using this keyboard.next method, and then stored in the string variable str. I'm going to annotate this here so you can see that the string would actually contain the single character capital D. Then in this line of code, I use this method call. I use my string that I just read in, str dot char at, this method that we looked at, zero, and this would extract the very first char from the string, returning it here and storing it in letter grade. When I push enter, you should see the character D printed out, and so we can see that works. Now just to run through one more brief example, if the user were to enter something that was not just one character, like here if they entered the word dog, the entire word dog would be read in and stored in this string str, let me annotate, but then this extracts just the first char, again just that first character, storing it in letter grade, and if I push enter, you can see only the letter grade was stored. Now it is completely valid for advanced programmers to combine these steps. As you can see, str is just a temporary holding place to store the next string entered. So as an alternative, I'm going to grab this keyboard.next, plug it in right here where I did have my string object, and now I can remove this line of code. If we inspect briefly, this does the exact same thing. This is going to grab the next string, returning it right here, and then using that string to call the string class's char at method. As long as there's a string put right here, I can call any of the string class's methods, including the char at, which is so handy for reading in chars. Um, note that new programmers typically like to leave this broken up into two steps, but this idea of chaining methods, so kind of stacking them on top of each other, um, can be useful when you get to more difficult programming problems. That's it for this video. You should now feel more comfortable working with the char variable type and have a better understanding of strings and the string class. Until next time.